Today I'm going to be discussing and demonstrating the OPS interactive gamepad for the PlayStation 1. So I'm going to start off by taking a look at OPS the company. It goes by the name OPS Electric. OPS Electric Co. Limited is a Japanese multinational corporation headquartered in Tokyo, Japan, producing electronic devices including switches, potentiometers, sensors, encoders and touchpads. It's also well known for the Alpine car audio product as well. And the company was established on the 1st of November 1948. Taking a look at keyboards, Alps is also very well noted for the mechanical switches that it makes for keyboards and it's been used by the likes of Next, Apple as well as IBM to make mechanical switches for their keyboards in the past. Taking a look at gaming consoles, if you look at the standard PlayStation controller, the analog sticks the mechanisms for the analog sticks on the standard control pads are made by Alps as well. And then obviously the product that I'm reviewing today being the Alps Interactive Controller. I'm now going to take a look at the controller itself. The controller is constructed of a high quality metallic blue plastic, which is extremely comfortable to hold in the hands. It also features two intricately molded rubberized grips, which form the underside of the two handles found on the controller. The buttons themselves as well as the D-pad are made of a high quality hard plastic. This includes the D-pad, the standard four buttons, as well as the four other buttons found on the pad. Okay, the start and the select buttons however are also made of a high quality rubberized material. The pad itself is extremely comfortable to hold and you can see a lot of thought has gone into its design. Even looking at the underside, the screws that hold all the panels in place are very nicely strategically placed and you can see that the finishing on the pad is extremely good. Even the label on the pad looks good. If you take a look at the cable which connects the pad to the console, it's a high quality cable and even the interface where it interfaces with the controller itself is high quality. Okay, so the pad itself has a very high quality feel to it. An interesting thing to note is that the pad is a lot lighter than you'd expect it to be. So for a pad of this size, it's quite a light thing to hold in the hand. So it won't fatigue you if holding it for lengthy periods of time. Okay, an interesting thing to note here is this pad has received quite a few bad reviews in the past due to the D-pad. And what I've done with this pad over a, quite a period of time is run the D-pad in. So Interestingly enough, this D-pad has to be run in, even though it features high quality up switches. Initially, it's very easy to get the up, down, left and right inputs from the D-pad, but the inputs that come in between are not that easy to get initially. But after running the D-pad in for some time, these in-between positions are now easily selected. However, as I'll show you in the video to come, if you run your finger lightly around the outside of the D-pad, you only get the up, left, down and right inputs. If you push a bit harder towards the center of the D-pad, then it's much easier to get the in-between inputs. So then if you run it around, you'll get all the inputs from the D-pad. I'm now going to demonstrate this pad to you, making use of the Vino on my Silicon Graphics Indie to render the output from the PlayStation 1. I'm going to start off by setting up the combo buttons on my gamepad. I'm now going to go into practice mode as it's very useful to use this mode to see the inputs that you're getting from your controller. Before I come to demonstrating the D-pad, I'm quickly going to show you the responsiveness of the Vino on the Indie. And you can see this by looking at the time difference between the input that I make on the D-pad and the change in the arrow that you see on the left hand side of the screen. Now circling my finger lightly around the outside of the D-pad, you only see the up, down, left and right inputs. Now applying a little bit more force to the center of the D-pad, you now see all the inputs.
I'm now quickly going to go into arcade mode to demonstrate the game playing as my favorite character, King. This really takes me straight back to my childhood. It's wonderful to see King racing around the screen again. It's been years. So I hope that this demonstration demonstrates firstly how well this controller performs, as well as the Silicon Graphics Indie's ability to render the outputs from old consoles such as the PS1. I'm going to finish off by stating that this is an awesome gamepad, and if you're a collector that's into collecting consoles, this piece of equipment would definitely enhance your collection, as none of the photos that you've ever seen of it do it true justice. It's an awesome thing to look at, and it's extremely well made. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks very much for watching.